Hello and welcome to part two of the Tyranid Eat the Eldar or the Battle of Inyandin. Uh, this time we'll start with the Prodigal Son. Word of Inyandin's peril managed to reach Prince Uriel, despite the psychic barriers isolating the craft world. Though Uriel, exiled long ago from Inyandin, had vowed never to return to the place of his birth, he could not abandon Inyandin in its darkest hour. Tempering his indignation, Uriel and his fleet made best speed to the battle. Like the burning spear of Cain, Uriel's forces thrust through the Hive Fleet Kraken's blockade and struck deep into the bio fleet enveloping Inyandin. The renegade prince was an admiral without peer and upon joining forces with the battered survivors of Inyandin's fleet, the Eldar ripped the heart out of the Tyranid swarm. Uriel prevented any more of Kraken's spawn from reaching the wounded craft world, whilst simultaneously coordinating counter-strikes on the largest bio-vessels. Kraken launched two further waves, but both were destroyed. Bloodied, but unbowed, Uriel's fleet prepared to sell their lives dearly, for surely another wave would overwhelm them. Minutes passed into hours as the Eldar ships scanned the ruins of their fleet, awaiting the next assault. But it did not come. The space-born high fleet had been defeated. Under Inyandin skies, the battle for the craft world's soul still raged. The Tyranids now turned like cornered rats and hurled themselves at the Eldar with renewed ferocity. A massive hive tyrant led the frenzied horde, and neither shuriken nor sword blade could pierce the monster's hide. Whether, whenever the beast was attacked, the Eldar were butchered. And across the craft world, the Tyranids were breaking through, sweeping aside pockets of resistance. The final confrontation was at hand, and victory was within the hive mind's grasp. Amidst the carnage, the Avatar stepped forward. With a growl akin to an erupting volcano, the fiery warrior roared a challenge at the hive tyrant. But instead of meeting the ironclad figure, the monster or urged its minions to attack. Not one, but a dozen carnifaxes stampeded towards the flame-wreathed avatar. Under such an assault, not even the embodiment of the bloody-handed god could prevail. With the avatar lost, the last vestiges of hopes ed ebbed from the Eldar. But in an act of loyalty that restored Uriel as a hero of his people, the raider prince and his forces disembarked from their ships to reinforce Inyandin's survivors. The Tyranids were on the verge of overrunning the Eldar lines when Uriel himself plunged into the fray, wielding the cursed Spear of Twilight. This ancient weapon locked in stasis by Inyandin seers, was a weapon of such power that it would eventually burn out the life force of any who wielded it. That Uriel was willing to sacrifice not only his life, but his immortal soul, was a testament to the drastic measures that had to be taken in order to defeat the Tyranids. With one fluid motion, Uriel thrust the Spear of Twilight into the Hive Tyrant's gaping maw and through the back of its chilitinous head. With a howling scream, the Tyrant collapsed and died at Uriel's feet. The last echoes of the monster's death shriek signaled the defeat of the alien horde. With their synaptic conduit severed, the remaining Tyranids ceased to attack as a unified wave as they reverted to their base instincts. The scattered alien invaders were systematically hunted and eliminated in a series of vicious one-sided battles. 
The Tyranid attack on Ninyandin was over. The cost of victory. The victory on Ninyandin was a hollow one indeed. For though Kraken had been defeated, Ninyandin stood in ruins. Four-fifths of Ninyandin's population lay dead. A terrible blow for a declining Eldar race. Amongst the slain lay Farseer Kelman, surrounded by the bodies of a dozen Tyranids whose forms bore the marks of psychic fire. Worse still, all the souls within those spirit stones had been destroyed by the Tyranids, were lost. Forever, Inyandin would never truly recover. The Eldar had learned a painful lesson and would never again underestimate the threat of the Great Devourer. Highfeed Kragen was now little more than a splintered fragment of its former might, yet credit lay neither entirely with the defenders of Inyandin nor with the actions of the Ultramarines on Icar IV. The Eldar and the Imperium had been fighting as an unwitting allies. Had Creighton not struck in Yandin, the Ultramarine's victory at Icar IV would have been impossible, and vice versa. Had either Icar IV or in Yandin fallen, Creighton would have been unstoppable. And that is the Battle of Inyandin. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to more stories of Tyranids eating other races. Until next time.